Hello, everybody who's who's present. This is our uh, community meeting for Network Manager. We had it also in the past, like last year in DevConf and two years ago, and also in DevConf US last summer. So the format is <laughs> very unstructured. We just, well, I thought I'd give a quick intro of what happened in the past year with Network Manager, but the focus should be on if you have any questions or, well, whatever you would like to discuss. So let me just, well, I thought I'd give a quick summary of Network Manager, what happened in the past year. So just this week, we, really, we made a new release, then 1.30 release. I think that's actually pretty good. As, as always, I had the feeling that every release is better than the previous one. So this too, it's already in Fedora, Fedora 34. And I think also in Debian testing, or at least unstable. And what does it bring? Well, when I always write the news file for the, for the release, or when we write it together, it often strikes me that there are not so many interesting new features, but that I feel that's kind of natural for such an old project, right? Network Manager, I mean, we got support for Wi-Fi 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So all of these normal things already work. So when we add a new feature, it's often quite, well, not, it's quite obscure, so, so to say. But there are still a few nice features. For example, um, Maybe Benjamina would like to say something about it. For example, uh, about WPA3 support. Benjamina, would you like to say something? Okay, it's fine. So, um, well, WPA3, that is of course mostly handled by WPA supplicant. So network managers just need it. Ah. Hi, Benjamino. Hi, do you hear me? Yes. Ah, um, yes, I also passed a link to a blog article that we did for the 130 uh, release. And uh, as Thomas said, Thomas said, we don't have uh, much, very uh, many exciting features, but uh, there are, there is some interesting stuff like, uh, the virtual Ethernet support that was introduced by Fernando. Um, we also have about um, WPA3. Um, we support a stronger uh, authentication for WPA3 Enterprise. And there are a lot of improvements uh, regarding, uh, for example, the initRD generator and LibNM. You can check the article for more details. Yes, I think, yeah, the init RD generator, that saw quite some improvements. And it's a relatively new part of Network Manager that we, what it does, it, it basically passes the command line from the kernel as defined by Dracad. And then it runs in init RD, run by Dracad, and it, it sets up the network. Like previously, the Dracad network module, it, it was basically a shell script that spawned DH client, and now it network manager runs there. So I think that works quite well. This is what happens in RHEL, in recent RHEL versions and in, in Fedora. And of course, it happens if you use network in, in init, init RD. I, I think uh, it's a good way to avoid duplicating the effort. So instead of having a, a way to configure networking in InterD and a different one in the real root, we have unified that. And now Network Manager manages all the network from the very beginning of this, the boot uh, going on. And, yeah. 
Yes, what I think would improve, another thing that improved, I think our CI and testing keeps getting better. I think that's also related because now more other components use Network Manager. I mean, like 10 years ago, there was only, only NM Applet and there was no CI. And when we would test Network Manager for a release, we would click around in the applet. But nowadays, all our, we have a lot of CI and other components that use the API extensively and differently than a user would do in NM applet. Like in NM applet, you click, it doesn't work. You click again and you say, okay, the test best. But there were so many r runtime conditions there that could happen. But if you have, but we, if we have all these tools that use network manager, then the API is much more used and tested. So I, I think the, the biggest improvements were that network manager keeps getting more stable and more testing and also more use. Like we have now NM state and Ansible role, which are related pro projects that can configure network manager. Yes. Fernando is uh, one of the maintainers of NM state. Yes. Hi, Fernando. Hi. Um, if you have any questions or anything related to suggestions or whatever related to NM state, so feel free to, to ask. We use uh, Network Manager for applying the uh, network configuration and supporting uh, persistent state and rollback on on NM state. So yeah, I would say that without Network Manager, NM state does almost nothing. Just gather the the network state. So we are testing a lot Network Manager in our CI. So this allows us to uh, to collaborate even more because, well, Network Manager at the same time is running uh, NM state test. So we can coordinate efforts and it allows us to discover bugs more quick. But yeah, having said that, if you have any question or whatever, go ahead, please. I think uh, I think you could share audio too, right? They, they could share audio if they want to talk. Is that possible? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, Andreas asked the question, could we get a simple and out of the box command script or system role to quickly bridge a physical interface and pass the IP config of the interface forward to the bridge without rebooting the system? Um, well, well, first of all, if the interface currently is configured with static IP configuration, then you would basically just create a profile, a bridge profile with the same static IP configuration. So that that can, that of course works. You just create the new profiles like the bridge and the, the port profiles for it with static IP configuration. And then you activate them. You don't need to reboot for that. And that is also, for example, what NM state and, uh, and the system role does. Like the Ansible system role you can configure there the profiles in, in YAML in the Ansible playbook, and then it does it. But more, I think this question was more like if you were doing DHCP on the interface, and then it's, and then you are not guaranteed that you get this. Then of course you can create a profile for the bridge that also does DHCP, and if you do everything right, then you might get the same IP address there. But yeah. For example, the, the IP address that you get depends on your MAC address, right? So you need to take care that the bridge has the same MAC address. Right? Hmm. I think this is all possible by, for example, if you use the Ansible system role, that you just create the right profiles. Yes, um, as you said, with, with the ACP, it's a bit more difficult because you have to, if you want to guarantee that the IP is the same, uh, for example, you have to to use the same MAC address, but also if you use IPv6, uh, I think you need to check that you use a do it 
and IA ID based on the MAC address. So <clears throat> it's a bit more difficult. Um, regarding uh, the question, so providing a command, yeah, I don't think it should be in Network Manager, but maybe in something at uh, an upper layer, like an M state or Ansible. Yes. In the, for that case, uh, we have introduced uh, for bridges and bond, etc. We have introduced a new property, which is copy Mac from. So it allows you to specify the Mac of the interface that you that you want to copy the the Mac address. So I think if that is the case, and someone configure a bridge with DHCP and copy the Mac address from one of the ports, the Mac the the IP will be configured as the uh, correctly i think i i should look more closely at this use case but if you are if you are interested on having this support on anime state because it could be useful for you uh let us know on github yes uh, i think i think this is possible what you are indicating with nmcli i think it's possible with anime state so if you want to, uh, to to check this further, I will pass you the GitHub repository of anime state and the documentation so you can take a look to it. And I think it could be possible to do with a simple state in 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 anime state. Uh, this is the repository. I encourage you to try it out. And it should be straightforward. If something does not wrong, that does not work on your side, uh, let us know on a GitHub issue or by IRC or email, and we could help you. Yeah, I think that's all. Yes, Andreas also suggested an NMCLI comment. And yeah, the difficulty is we are always very slow at adding new NMCLI comments because this is kind of our API. And then usually later, later it turns out to not be flexible enough or so. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. How to improve that. Hello. Did you hear? Hi. Hi. Yes. I, I'm I'm Javier. The, I opened a merge request to to Network Manager to add support to Wirewire to NMQI. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about this merge request, it would be nice. Yes, I saw the merge request. Thank you. That's really <laughs> great. Especially because NMC like currently cannot configure WireGuard peers. So if you could do that with NM2 at least, it would be very helpful. Okay. So we're looking forward to to finalize this one. <laughs> Thank yes, you. I, I um, currently I'm trying to to add the uh, the peer support. I'm, I took a look to the um, the code that um, that let you um, configure the IP routes in, for example, in uh, in in any in any interface. And I'm trying to um, take this code and adapt to to add um, the support to the to the peers. I'm. I basically I'm and now I have a some kind of monster uh, code uh, because I copied uh, the the files. Uh, let me let me see the files. I used to 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 start with the with the uh, peer support. Um, uh, sorry. I'm searching. I I 
I'm taking as um, example um, nmt root editor dot c and dot h nm nmt root edit uh, entry dot c and M nmt root table dot c and i'm trying to adapt this code um i, co I copied this code change uh, the name to to geiger peer entry or table or uh, editor and and trying to to add the the peer support um um the taking us uh the, this uh this other code as uh as, as the base uh, or as uh example i i'm i'm not sure if if, if this is the um, the correct the path or the correct way but this is currently what i'm trying to to do yes the I don't know, but I would think that, like for the routes, if you look at the UI in NM3 for the routes, it's relatively simple. It's like a, a list or like a table. Uh -huh. And that also would work for wildcard beers, but it might not, I don't know, with, for wildcard beers, there are so many properties, uh -huh. right? So I'm not sure how you could, how you could have them all in one line. Okay. So, okay. so, uh, it, it might look confusing. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm not sure. I guess there should be like a list of all the peers by their, uh, and then you could edit one and it would open a new window. Or maybe you could select one and below there are the, the fields of the, of the selected peer that you can then edit. Like mm -hmm. not opening a new window, but in the same window to use, up there is a list of all the peers, and then below there are the the, yes, the also, properties of the peer. I also take a look to the um, to um, I, I think it was um, uh, Benyamin's commit. Uh, they, they had they, they had um, had it um, uh, where where are support to an NM connection connector editor the the graphical user interface and i i uh my my plan was to more or less uh, replicate the the graphical user uh, editor uh, uh, to the text user editor yeah Th that sounds good i would also think that the slaves or the like if you have a bridge if you edit a bridge configuration then you see there are a list of all the ports and those, and I think that is similar. There should be a list of all the peers and then you can select one of them and edit. Okay. Right. So I think a better example are the list of the ports for a bridge than the list of routes because the routes are, yeah, it's from the UI, it's just different. And um, uh, if uh, the routes is not the, um the better code to to take as uh, as example uh, do you know any other any other uh, files in the in the in an mtui that maybe it could be similar to what are you what what do you want in 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 the in the peer editor um, I don't know which file now. I'm not so no, familiar no, with the NM3 no, no problem, code. No but if you open the, if you create a, a bridge profile, then ah. you will see there the list of ah, ports. The, the slaves. Okay, okay. Yeah, now now, now yeah. I understand that. Okay, okay. The only difference is that when the new slave, you click to add a new slave in the bridge, for example, uh -huh. it spawns a new, it reuses the add connection, the connection editor for Ethernet. <clears throat> um, so it's simple. In, it's a bit simpler in that in that case. You instead have to add a new dialog for the peers. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, bridges and bonds are good are a good good example. Okay, uh, I will take a look to to that code and I will try to to. To use them to to do the the peer 
the peer shopper. I, I think this is the the file that Javier is looking for, the NMT slave list. No, uh, no, I will currently. Um, I'm looking for uh, this file. Uh -uh. But but this one currently uh, show up the list of uh, slave. Ah, the um, okay. And, okay, and, okay. And then it it show up the list, and I think it's implementing the get property and set property. So okay. But not sure how this work with the rest of the code. As I'm not familiar too with NM3. Okay. Yes, let's talk about this also more next week on, on IRC or on the on okay. the merge request. Perfect. Uh, so uh, I will keep in touch with with it and we'll discuss this uh, further in the following day. Bye. Thank you. See you. About the previous topic, Andreas also said that on, on hosted system, it's important that you are able to do this without cutting yourself off from the network. And in general, that is of course important that, yes. Uh, Andreas said, uh, before also without reboot. And in general, it's important that you, for network manager, that you can change something with, without rebooting. So we never say <laughs> the solution is to reboot the machine. So definitely should be possible, but it's a bit dangerous, right? You activate the diff, you, it might just work, especially if you use static IP addressing. So you can do it via SSH, you activate the other profile and it will be fine. But then if you do DHCP on that other interface and you might get a different IP address, that could be highly annoying, right? Yeah. And then currently, uh, NM State also has an outreach student, and she's also here today. I, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, Sh Shriya. So hi, uh, maybe uh, Fernando, you, you would like to yeah to say something about the I outreach like, project. I would like her to introduce herself if possible. So if you want to request audio, if not, I can do it. No worry. Hello. 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 Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Shreya, and I am from India. And uh, we are currently I'm contributing to NM State with Fernando, and we are we are trying uh, we are writing codes to implement WireGuard support to NM State. And I'm here to learn and connect to you with you all. That's great, thank you. Yes, it seems WireGuard is quite popular nowadays. Yes, indeed it is. And our plans is to, to support you for the next uh, big release of, of NM State. So uh, there is already a draft VR, which needs some work, but it's uh, mostly working in the main cases. We need to uh, some conditions on peers etc but it's in very good shape so yeah Sreya is doing a very good job here and hopefully we can uh, simplify the YGAT configuration using Nevo Manager with this so only two weeks ago Benjamino also did a, a patch to NM Applet so finally, NM Applet also works with WireGuard. Nice. What is still missing is GNOME, GNOME 3 support. Like the control center and the GNOME shell. But we, I mean, the people here, we actually don't usually work on, on GNOME stuff. So 
that is more the yeah we are a bit detached from the community there i mean we usually don't contribute to gnome control center so hopefully somebody will pick it up So if there are any questions, right, please uh, feel encouraged to ask. In the meantime, I, I was thinking about what, what will we do in the next year for Network Manager. And again, the answer is not very exciting, unfortunately. It's because we just try to keep Network Manager to get better. Ah. So, okay, let me, uh, hi, Andreas, uh, Andras. Hello, it's really nice to see you for the first time. I'm only a user of Network Manager, and I would like to share my personal which I couldn't solve without your help, Thomas. I'm working for SAP, and uh, we faced the situation where we wanted to use hot plug functionality for some network cards. You know, there are different cloud environments and other environments where you can just plug in a network card, and, and some of my colleagues wanted to make it work as it is. Just plug it in, get an IP address with DHCP. And it was not possible on Red Hat 7 for the first time. And then I realized that there is a really huge potential in Network Manager and, and a bunch of features that probably people just don't know about. You know, like someone asked to have a one-liner for a bonding stuff, things like that. And do you have any idea how I could show examples, I mean like real life examples to my colleagues. Oh, and, and the good news is with your help, I could a bit evangelize or how to say network manager in SAP. So now we started to use it in many projects here in Hungary, of course, but also in Germany, US and India. With the config you helped us to make. Oh, that's great. We are always happy if it works. <laughs> Is this is this in a cloud environment, like in in Amazon cloud or so? Uh, we have a own cloud env environment, which is basically an OpenStack fork, and now we use it there and and some other places also. But my main point would be when we are just running through the documentation for the first time, many things and and really nice features what Network Manager has. It's not obvious for the first time, like. I've never believed that it can match interfaces, I mean types or names or, or anything like that to apply a configuration for that interface. And you know, I was using Network Manager for years because of my desktop, of course. But uh, yeah, and and when, when you show people that, listen, use Network Manager, just look at the routing table. The metrics will be much better if you start Network Manager and, and not these old legacy kind of and not only use this old kind of legacy shell script network configuration files, it, it will be much better in many ways. But for some reason, people still ignore it, or I guess they just don't know. Do you have any ideas how to how to let people know about the nice features which Network Manager has? Well, unfortunately, I think we are very bad at marketing. <laughs> like only recently, in the past year, we got a better website, hopefully, and it's still at the infancy. I mean, there is no content there yet. We really need to improve that. So all of these things need to be improved by like more blogging, more helpful. For example, System D, back a few years ago, Leonard wrote these, uh, these really great blog articles, System D for administrators. Mm -hmm. So I think such blog articles are actually a very useful thing. So we should do more of that. Second, our website really should improve. We are aware of that, but unfortunately making website is not, I mean, not more like the, the content of the website. It's just, yeah. A huge time sink. Yeah, I know. It can be a huge time sink. 
and we are not. I, yeah. Now you want to work on the project itself. Yes, and in, I'm, I guess a lot of people dislike Network Manager. Also, that is fine. Of course, you can use whatever you want, but they have a certain preconception, and Definitely. and I find it hard to. I think we need to fix that by by just that it works well. So it's not it's I, so sure we should do better marketing, but I also believe it should just work well for people and speak for itself. But you are right; people might not uh, not discover the features. Right. So yeah, I have no answer for that, but it's a good point. It's really so important just to sell your project in a in a good way. I mean not sell, but to make, to advertise what, what it just can do so that people can learn it and, and, and see that it is useful to them. I don't know how to improve that. But anyways, other... many thanks for all your help. You really helped a lot to me in my daily job. Yeah, that's great. Yes. I think also a lively IRC channel is important here. We should, we should really uh, be there when when people have questions. Sometimes on the mailing list, our mailing list is not very active. But sometimes somebody asks asks a question and it does not get much attention. That's also bad. Somebody from the community should always reply to e to emails or on IRC channel and, and help out to others. So that's important, yeah. But great that, I mean, we obviously like Network Manager, so it's great if others also can appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we were often talking about how can we even improve our, I don't know, yeah, advertisement. Advertisement is such a bad word, but how, yeah. What do others think about that? Like Benimino or Fernando, what do you think? or in the audience, of course. <clears throat> As you said, um, for sure, blogging would help and advertise more when you have new exciting features. Um, or even minor features. Uh, like, for example, you said that we added support to the applet. And for many people, that could be very useful. So maybe we should start uh, publishing some somewhere about it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, improving the documentation uh so people know uh, documentation on the, the website for example uh, so people know uh, what are the features um, and maybe also increasing our community so the people who contribute to network manager i don't have a suggestion on how to improve it uh, but that would help if we have more people contributing uh, or even more people reporting what they need, uh, which are the features that uh, uh, can make Network Manager better. I think blagging is obviously something quite good. Uh, we should do more vlogging. Also, I noticed that a lot of community, a lot of people is using Network Manager, but they don't know they are using Network Manager if they are not technical and have to do networking stuff. Because well, all Fedora users use Network Manager, uh, CentOS or Rel users. So well, I will say that also, if I'm not wrong, Ubuntu users also use Network Manager, right? That depends which flavor you use. Yeah. With server Ubuntu, you get network D. And with desktop, you, 
well, you anyway can choose, but I think by default. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, I think now that mostly all of my friends and people around me use Nemo Manager, even they don't know. So maybe one, one thing that I could find is a travel shooting guide. Uh, when I look for issues on Nemo Manager, Well, it's it's nice to have like a, a I don't know a guide or a wiki or something where we have the troubleshooting. If you find this issue, you need to do whatever other. Because well, I always go to the Arch wiki, which is quite useful and have a lot of troubleshooting stuff for Nebo Manager. But it would be nice to have something specific for Nebo Manager issues. And as Sreya said, as a student and new contributor. I find blogs, blogs related to networking of the of the project, etc., really helpful. Maybe that is something that can really help new contributors. Yeah, I think it's really, you are right. Uh, it's very nice to have blogs explaining stuff about Never Manager, and it's uh, not only for new contributors. For me, uh, why God was something that's uh, known. So. The blog about how to configure YGAD interfaces using Nemo Manager was pretty helpful to understand how it worked. So I think for even new contributors and old contributors, this could be something good because, well, Nemo Manager is too big and it doesn't matter if you implement something, you're not going to work or you're not going to understand the whole project and all the features. So maybe you will need to look to documentation from time to time. Eric was asking whether the core team uh, has some private channels or whether we use the mailing list list or IRC channels. And uh, actually, we our, I think our main channel is the upstream IRC channel. Although I must say, we also, like me, Benjamino and Fernando, we work at Red Hat. So we also have a Red Hat internal IRC channel. And sometimes we discuss things there and I think this is a good reminder that we shouldn't do that. So we really should limit our private discussions. We should not have many private discussions, if at all, but really discuss more things on IRC on Freenode. The mailing list is not much used for discussions because we nowadays use GitLab. And yeah, we use GitLab and we discuss the, the issues there. I mean, like a merge request. On the other hand, large architectural discussions, that's of course di difficult to find a place, right? There the mailing list would still be useful. So, yeah. So um, I, I think, it, sorry, it's a very good reminder, very important to use the upstream channels like the mailing list and IRC, totally. Yes, we are all remote, of course. Um, we have a meeting uh, some meetings which are uh, internal <clears throat> uh, where we discuss things but maybe it would be useful to have a once every time week or two weeks a public meeting where people can join and bring problems or suggestions i don't know that's a very good idea we should, uh, first of all, we should improve our website, but there we should also have, there we should write about such weekly or two bi-weekly meetings. We use currently Google Meet for that. Yes, let's do that also. Ah, okay, on YouTube. Does this mean they are streamed there live or are they recorded and then uh, or is it is it live there or is it a recording on YouTube? Okay. Yeah, I'm, let's see how interesting they, these meetings will be, right? So maybe we could even put them on YouTube. But we should at least have them like I don't know, office hours, so to say. But, but 
it's really not that it, it, I always like this idea that it's a, the open source community and it's not just me and Benjamin and Fernando and a few others who developed this and everybody else is the user. So when I say office hour, it sounds like the developer team meets with the users. I think this should be more like a community thing. So yes, we need to do more community and such a meetup weekly or bi-weekly would be, we, we will do that. Good point. Hi guys, this is Gaurav. I just had a quick question. So maybe some code walkthrough sessions in the upstream uh, and the public meetings could help engaging with the new custom and uh, new new developers or the new contributors here. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. I saw once on YouTube uh, a live stream about some GNOME uh, project developing a feature there. That was quite interesting. It's a good idea. Community actually in Ceph storage community, we uh, the community has regular efforts. Just, just, I'm just sharing an example where the developers actually go through the entire piece of code uh, and an entire components code. So, and maybe if the component is too long, they can, they usually break down into two sessions. So that would, I mean, help in engaging with the community. Are these recorded or is it again yeah. live stream? These are uh, live streamed and recorded. Okay. Because from the flow, I think it's quite different whether you do a live stream or whether you pre-record a, 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 vi a video. Okay. That's a, I, I think the biggest question that most, uh, at least for us and for many open source projects is how to attract new developers and contributors. And this is, yes. It, it's also unfortunately quite hard to get started with development of network manager. Yes, good point. Let's think about that more. Just for Dev, DevConf, also Benjamino made a recording about how to use Wi-Fi. That is of course targeted more for users, but uh, such things, we do that much too seldom. Like it's also about the shortness. It's nice if it's only 10 minutes or less about one specific topic. Eric just said, okay, okay, the, the day that it's like a, a live session where they meet, which is then recorded like a lot. If I, if I understood correctly. Yes. Uh, as you talked about uh, the videos that we did, I did one about uh, WireGuard configuration and Thomas recorded a video about um, NM Cloud setup, uh, the tool to configure uh, networking in cloud environments using Network Manager. So I think it will, we could start adding a new section to the site where maybe we collect all videos. Um, that will be interesting, I think, for users. Very good point. Yes, all of these must be found via the via our website. We must link our blog articles there, we must link our videos there, and we must li link our communication channels or our weekly meetings if they are public as they would, should be. Good point. Karel is asking a question. Uh, something technical, very good. Uh, how can I force search domain settings for a specific connection, especially via VPN, to send all DNS queries to DNS servers from that connection, independently of the received search domain for this connection? And in that case, I think, if, uh, and 
Um, so I, I've, I think when this is this question is mostly about how to avoid DNS leaks, I guess that you that you only access the DNS via the VPN. So the, the first part of it is that you make sure that you route your traffic via the VPN and that is configured by setting the route metric accordingly, right? So by default already, the VPN profile has a route metric of 50, which is lower than all other connection types. So if you set the default route on the VPN, you will, everything will be routed via the VPN. But of course about DNS. So the real, the proper solution is to set the DNS priority. Every profile has a DNS priority setting. And if you set that to a negative value, it kind of means exclusive. So you need to set that, uh, that property. And that should be enough. And you say, you also talk about that it does not get, that the DNS servers are not received from automatically. So you can, you can manually configure the DNS settings and you can, there is a property it's called ignore DNS, ignore auto DNS or something like that. So that you don't get it automatically. Although now I'm not sure I had the feeling there was an issue with VPN in this regard. Not sure about that. That, that might be a bug specific to VPN connections. But in principle, just say not automatic DNS settings and negative DNS priority. I was also, I, previously I wanted to talk what we are going to do in the next year. And one of the things that I think currently are not well implemented is like the, the VPN plugins. Although for many users, probably VPN plugins is one of the greatest features of Network Manager their implementation is not as great as it should be. So, for, and this is hard, it's a lot of effort to change. And we are pondering about it already for a long time. But I think in the next one year, we should make some progress in this, in this area. There are kind of two problems. One problem is that Network Manager spawns the VPN plugin directly. Instead, it should start a, a separate system D service for it. So that that VPN plugin would be sandboxed differently. The second problem is how they are modeled inside network manager. That is a bit special. It, that is, it, it's, yeah. Ah, it's already quite late. I think our time will run out very soon. So if you have any, any last questions or remarks, Ah, Karel, I hope this made sense. If not, please reach out on IRC.